Yeah, this slot is around the, um, the right storage for OpenStack, um, specifically block storage. Um, and um, since we have a limited amount of time, um, yeah, I assume all of you know uh, around OpenStack uh, and uh, are familiar with it, so I'll more focus on the, the technical aspects uh, around um, SolidFire and the integration uh, uh, with OpenStack. Um, but before I do that, um, I would like to briefly have an overview in, um, in our portfolio, um, then go into a little around Cinder, uh, and then I would like to demonstrate um, how the integration between OpenStack and our platform uh, would, uh, would function. Um, so, um, yeah, as we're limited of time, I'm, uh, I'm going to continue. Um, this is um, um, basically a view of our portfolio uh, when it comes to the various products. NetApp is well known for uh, our data on tap based systems. Um, we have been engineering this, this platform for the past 25 years. It's an enterprise architecture um, with uh, software initially combined with hardware, and now we're selling the software separately as well. Recently, we have acquired um, SolidFire, recently, a year and a half ago, um, which is a, a company which was founded in 2010 and is now a, a, a part of the next generation data center portfolio within NetApp. Um, EF series uh, is part of the um, um, LSI acquisition. We acquired the disk drive division from LSI. It's very fast, very dense storage, but not a lot of data management capabilities, which the other two platforms provide, um, but ideally works, for, for, for example, in acceleration of single application stacks like um, uh, Hadoop or such uh, deployments also fits very well underneath Ceph, for example, as in a uh, storage uh, expansion. Storage Grid is our own object storage, um, everything you'd expect from object storage, S3, uh, targets, um, policy-based and uh, lifecycle management around data. Um, AltaVault, which is our cloud gateway, um, providing the ability to backup to uh, an object store, um, ideally one of ours, but clearly others are supported and the external, uh, like um, the Amazon one is supported. And on command is our uh, management and capacity management tooling. And with all of these products, we have uh, an integration within, um, let's say, the various projects within, uh, within OpenStack. Um, for data on tap, we are a multi-protocol platform, so we provide multiple protocols and therefore you, for example, you would see Cinder and Manila. Manila is uh, uh, the file-based uh, project within, uh, for file access within OpenStack. It's actually uh, started with us um, a couple of years after uh, Cinder was, uh, was started. Um, Swift object storage, um, and um, yeah, this is the, the mapping of our products. Um, and today's session is, uh, is around um, SolidFire uh, specifically. Um, we have other session uh, later today specifically uh, around the focus on uh, containers, um, but this is SolidFire in combination with OpenStack. And just to illustrate, um, yeah, OpenStack is like Google Call um, with Worst, uh, and Google Call with Worst is a, a typical Dutch dish, um, and we like uh, mashed potatoes with uh, the green stuff and, uh, and the sausage. Um, and I changed this from an American slide, like it's a sandwich with uh, peanut butter and jelly, which would resonate less, uh, let's say, here. But it, it kind of goes very well together. And to tell a little bit around uh, the history of, uh, of SolidFire, the founder of SolidFire was um, a gentleman called Game, uh, um, Dave Wright, and he was working for a company called uh, GameSpy, um, I think 2003, 2004 timeframe. And um, he was responsible for the, the technical infrastructure and the software underpinning the online gaming services they provided. They got acquired by a company called IGN, which is still a large uh, online gaming platform. But he did not went along with the acquisition and having seen the opportunities on providing service on the, on the internet, he started his own uh, company called Jungle Disk. And Jungle Disk was backed up to the cloud and Dropbox type functionality. Um, and he did two things. Not only he created the technical offering uh, with his team, but also um, he built a very successful company. And the company was um, successful uh, as such that uh, Rackspace acquired um, Jungle Disk. And the services provided with Rackspace um, became part of the managed hosting offering um, of Rackspace in, uh, next to the Colo. And at that point in time, he was part of the uh, organization looking after the managed hosting offering of, uh, of Rackspace. And um, yeah, basically, uh, they were looking how to cope with the upcoming competition from Amazon. 
right? Amazon uh, providing a self-service portal, very easy uh, to consume resources. Um, and yeah, they, they face this as competition. How can we build um, basically the, uh, the equivalent for our own? And this is where they together with NASA started OpenStack. And at that time, the founder of SolidFire was at Rackspace. And um, they were looking, okay, if we're starting this project for great automation and orchestration, um, what do we need at the various layers of the infrastructure, compute, network, and storage to be able to fit in there? And this is where he came up with a list of requirements. And specifically for storage, he was looking to buy a platform in the market. And um, yeah, basically from all of the established vendors, um, he couldn't get it, not from NetApp, not from the others, but also from the start, it's from that moment, he could not get a platform which provided all of the functionality he needed. So um, basically what he did, he, um, from his technology heart, went away and um, uh, started his own company in 2010, uh, which was SolidFire, and basically built the, uh, the storage platform. Um, and initially selling into service providers, where IT is the business, and later on selling into um, uh, companies like software development or with web presence who take advantage of the platform. Um, and one of the big bets uh, they also took early uh, when the product was developed and also the um, um, let's say the, uh, the years after was um, looking into um, OpenStack. So typically, um, prior to acquisition, I think 50% of the SaltFire business was, uh, was OpenStack related, 30% VMware and 30% uh, the, uh, let's say, the, the bare metal uh, systems. And one of the things that he did is about the Cinder driver. When Cinder moved out of, uh, or Blazing Block Storage moved, moved out of Nova, um, they put in a lot of effort um, to make sure that not only the generic driver was developed, but also our specific features of SolidFire were part of the native driver. Um, and um, yeah, we dedicated engineering resources um, and were leading the project and still actually uh, one of the guys who uh, was leading the project, John Griffith, is still a, a NetApp employee um, through the acquisition. So he's still here. So also if you would like to see changes in uh, the Cinder project, um, yeah, we can easily uh, bring them into the, the group and see if we can put them uh, upstream into the uh, OpenStack distribution. Um, lots of lots of contributors now um, and many, many vendors uh, representing there. Um, so what were these specific features for SolidFire? Um, it's the way we built the platform. Um, it's the way we do scale out. Um, and it's basically an N plus one architecture. You, beyond the initial four, you can scale with single increments. And um, we do automatic load balancing of the data in the infrastructure, so all nodes are equally burdened in terms of capacity, but also uh, equally burdened in terms of the workload, right? And this all happens transparent to the uh, virtualization or server layer. Um, the guaranteed performance, which is if you're building a cloud infrastructure and you need to facilitate um, a lot of workloads, um, and a lot of workloads which are unknown, um, it sometimes can be difficult uh, to control performance, not having one tenant or one application eating all of the resources away. And this is um, what we provided a storage layer to really um, um, enforce the storage quality of service. And normally, um, storage quality of service is very immature compared to what's happening at the server and network layer. And this implementation is really um, um, and allowing not only putting a ceiling on the uh, um, throughput or IOPS, but also providing minimum guarantees within the platform. So you can really consolidate many unknown workloads on a truly shared platform. Um, and it was designed to be managed from elsewhere, right? So it was designed, the first three versions of the product only had a REST-based API. There was no GUI. There is still no console to log on. It just have, operates through the um, through the API with the various toolkits, um, uh, SDKs like uh, Python, Python, for example, but also um, Ansible, Puppet, Chef, those tools you can uh, utilize to manage this, uh, this platform. And now for demoing, there is a GUI, which is fine for me today. Um, another item is um, we don't use typical RAID technology. Um, so we use our own data protection scheme. Um, we, uh, and, and this enables, um, yeah, let's say fairly fast rebuilds, right? So if an SSD drive would fail, because it's an all flash platform, um, uh, in normal platforms, the rebuild could take hours. And if you would spinning disk, it could take even longer. And we've all experienced this, I guess. Um, and in our platform, a rebuild of a drive is done within 10 minutes. And an entire node failure is restored um, within the hour, right? So um, this also gives you a thought of um, 
yeah, maybe have a different look at your support contracts when it comes to, uh, to hardware. And with this, the architecture is also that we maintain quality of service to your application while component failures are, are happening in the infrastructure. So we're always honoring, honoring the minimum guarantee towards the application, for example. And the last, it's, yeah, it's a bit of a boring topic, but um, if you're starting a, a new platform uh, for data management, um, you know, you're doing this in 2010 timeframe, the choice is disk or flash. It's going to be flash, and to make the business case work, we have data reduction technology, always on thin provisioning, always on inline um, uh, deduplication and compression, without performance impact, um, and it's just there. It's nothing to manage, and just to, um, to know it's there. Um, many of the examples, if we would uh, meet uh, or have other sessions, are with three, four, four nodes, right? And it's um, yeah, relatively uh, simple hardware. It's uh, one you uh, compute, uh, compute nodes, uh, Intel architecture, 10 SSDs per node. Each node is equipped with um, dual 10 gigi, which go to any top of rack switch. Um, and from there on, the software running on each node uh, would create an uh, individual uh, copy, would create the cluster. Um, but all of the examples are four nodes, and I want to give you a feel of the scale we can get. Um, so we can get to 100 nodes for, uh, for such a cluster. And uh, while adding nodes or removing nodes from the infrastructure, the data and load distribution towards the, the newly added nodes or the nodes you remove will happen automatically without any reconfiguration from a server's perspective, server perspective. Also, it's a controllerless shared nothing architecture, right? So. Um, um, you will always scale capacity and the related performance hand in hand. Um, so, for example, if you would have 100 nodes, you would have 1,000 drives. In this configuration, we would have more CPU cores than we have drives in the platform, right? Um, and uh, we also guarantee a certain amount of performance per node. So we have nodes which are tested and guaranteed for 50,000 IOPS, and we have nodes guaranteed for 100,000 IOPS. And you can combine these in a cluster and basically pick and choose in terms of our capacity points and performance points the type of nodes you would be uh, adding into the cluster or taking out. And we have a guarantee program which also facilitates the compatibility and therefore um, future uh, uh, lifecycle management actions, for example. Um, then a little, uh, as I mentioned, it's a, it's a block platform. Uh, what we often see is um, um, the conversation block versus, um, no, I'm not here today. Um, object storage, right? We have our own object storage platform and we have our uh, block storage uh, offerings. Now, specifically the uh, applications we would see uh, around uh, block storage, it's more of the production workloads and clearly there are alternatives uh, uh, when it comes to um, um, block storage in the open source as well. But in many cases, we actually see that many customers would start um, with the open source uh, equivalents for iSCSI storage, for example. Um, but when they move to production, we often see that um, if the performance SLA needs to be guaranteed, the availability needs to be guaranteed, um, that solid fire is, for example, added to those types of deployments. And this is more performance focused, supporting your production workloads, and object storage or the other alternatives might uh, fit better into um, uh, capacity oriented uh, workloads. Um, so, conscience of time, um, a little around the uh, releases, right? So, the first was Folsom, where we uh, had the core functionality around uh, the integration with, uh, with OpenStack. And from there on, we kept on innovating and developing in the, uh, in the Cinder uh, project. And what you actually see is that many of the functions are Float Fire first, right? And which are part of the um, uh, upstream um, code and in every uh, distribution. But many of the functions we uh, put in the, uh, the Cinder driver are solid fire first, and then a release later, um, they're either removed <laughs> because it's, uh, the, the community decided to do it differently, or they are exposed to, uh, to other vendors as well. Um, so in this case, um, yeah, up until the Mitaka release, we're adding uh, multi-attached volumes and, uh, and replication, for example. Um, and now to give you a little feel about, um, let's say, the ease of integrating um, solid fire storage into the uh, OpenStack environment. So if you would set up a cluster, which is an easy task, um, it would take you half an hour uh, rack and stack and five minutes of software configuration. Um, and from there on, you have a standard administration account. You could utilize that one or create another administration account. 
adding in um, a few lines of code, I will show, or a few lines of configuration parameters in the cinder.com file, um, and uh, uh, enable it as an additional backend, um, restart the process, and um, from there on, um, you'll be managing the entire system um, through OpenStack. So there is no need to pre-configure network ports, to pre-configure rate groups, or um, pre-provision LUNs, or set up the backend. So right out of the box, you will be able to, uh, to utilize this platform. And to show this, uh, how this uh, would work, I would like to um, quickly um, show it <coughs> a demo. Uh, I need to change this one moment. Display. <coughs> Yes, this works. Um, one is the, um, let's say, the, the man pages within um, these, if this is visible, yeah, these are actually, this is all you need to add to the cinder.com file. So in the black box, it's, uh, what is it? Five lines of, uh, of configuration parameters. That's all you need to add into cinder.conf. And um, there are no specific drivers uh, needed on, this, uh, on the Nova compute nodes or whatever. You just add this into cinderconf and enable the, um, the multi-backend, and that's it. Um, we have some specific solid fire uh, parameters you could add as well, which are not necessarily, but make life a little easier. Um, and yeah, as I said, these are the supported um, standard configuration uh, or standard functions. And um, we have the, the ability to manage the quality of service also completely uh, from an OpenStack perspective. So, um, logging into OpenStack. Horizon, there we go. Um, I'm already logged into a SolidFire cluster. Um, and from a volume perspective, there are a few volumes there which are already uh, from, uh, from previous sessions. Um, and here I am in the, uh, in the dashboard. Something to consider if you would create a project in OpenStack. Um, it correlates to what's happening at the storage layer. So what I mean by that, um, if um, you provision storage in uh, a SolidFire platform, you always map it into an account for reporting and who uses what purposes, right? So for example, if you have the admin uh, project, in this case, the admin tenant project ID, um, on the cluster, if I would go into accounts, you actually see that the UI, UID of um, 85.897 is automatically created as an account on the storage. So it's very easy to correlate what's happening at the OpenStack layer and what's happening at the, uh, at the storage layer. <coughs> That's one. Um, then, if you would go into specific the storage bit, um, you would have uh, volume types, so you can actually specify a certain class of storage, if you will. Um, SolidFire enables the ability to define the tiers you would have in the past, like SATA, SOS, and Flash. It's all Flash, but you can still define your, your tiers, gold, silver, bronze, and enforce it in the software. It's truly software-defined software. And you can manage uh, or associate a quality service pack to a certain um, storage class. So I would um, add a volume type. Let's uh, do um, open, open stack days Benelux. Create volume type. Here it is. Um, now I would create a quality service specification. And this is all standard OpenStack functionality, so there is no specific drivers or code needed to make this happen. But I would say min IOPS, for example. Uh, oh, now let's say performance. This is the name of the thing, backend. So there is the quality service pack performance, uh, manage specification, um, create a key, uh, min IOPS. Let's make it uh, 1000. There we go. Add in another one. Bear with me, I'm going to add another two. Uh, maximum IOPS, so this is the ceiling. I'm going to make it 2,000 and do another for the burst level. And let's do the burst level 
of 20,000. Make it 18,000. There we go. And now I can associate the performance um, tier I've just defined um, and manage to our profile of today. So that's the performance one we just created. And then I would say associate. So now, this from an administration perspective, if we would um, provision a volume, um, we could associate a, a certain volume type with it. Just have a quick look on the, um, um, on the CLI for this. So Cinder list, you see the volume. If I would list a Cinder um, type list, I would get the um, volume types. Here's the one I just created. And if I would say um, Cinder calls list, come on, sorry. Then we actually see um, the performance tier I have just created as well, right? So you can manage it uh, from that perspective. But this is all standard OpenStack functionality. Um, now, let's provision uh, a view. So the admin creates the service catalog, the portal, which you are going to expose to your, uh, your consumers. And a consumer would always start a, a project and let's say, um, I want to provision a volume, create volume. Um, I would say, um, Benelux could give a description. I'm not going to take uh, an image, but I could take an image and make a bootable uh, instance as well. Let's say um, I'm going to start with the bronze one and make it 10 gig. I have only one availability zone, but normally you could choose your availability zone here as well, where to provision, create volume. Volume is created, um, name Benelux, but if I would go into the volume, um, then I would also see it's got a UID, which everything gets assigned into OpenStack. So now if I would go to the volumes on the storage side, um, it's 5.7.d3, and we actually, if I would hit refresh, should say 5.7.d3, right? So it's very easy um, to correlate what's happening in OpenStack and at the storage layer, and um, it's done in this specific project. So um, yeah, should you do accounting or other stuff, it's, it's very easy to, uh, to fill your environment. From a quality of service perspective, um, this volume has got 750, 1250, and 2500 IOPS, which we really enforce, and we were happy to show you if we would have more time. Now I would like to focus on the management bit from an OpenStack perspective, and let's say I have this workload and suddenly it moved from dev into production, and I gave it a lower quality of service in development because I want to have clean code and I just want to enforce to make sure the application works at a lower performance level, but now it needs to move in production and I need to update the quality of service spec. So I would go into uh, this view and I could say, well, this is my volume, let's change the volume type. And suddenly I could say, well, it's now on uh, um, the lower tier, but take the one we just defined. A migration policy is never, because we're not going to move data from slower disks to faster disks. No, we're just going to enforce the policy. So we do not have to move the data and then change volume type. Volume type will get updated. And um, clearly, this should read at the burst level now 18,000 IOPS. Hope stuff works. And there you go. It's been upgraded, right? And all of it is managed solely through, um, through the OpenStack interface. So as I said, there is no additional um, uh, drivers required. I can show you the, um, the stuff we would uh, have to do in, um, or add into the Cinder configuration file. So there you go. I've added a little of the specifics uh, with the SF prefix. So you see actually the specifics on the solid fire, but the other ones, the, the five I just showed you in the uh, documentation, are the ones you need uh, a bare minimum to operate. And a little higher, you see the um, multi backend. I don't see it, but you have to enable um, the additional backend as well, and they need to correlate. You have to call out specifically solid fire. And this is the 
the ease of use, if you will, uh, using the storage um, with, it, with OpenStack um, in, uh, in this perspective. Um, and yeah, basically all the operations like snapshotting, cloning, um, glance image caching, all of those functions, um, yeah, you basically just use the OpenStack framework um, and don't require additional work or additional drivers. So there's also never the issue to uh, update driver. If should you install a new release of OpenStack, we're upstream in every distribution, unless we're deliberately taken out. But um, yeah, it's there. Um, so any questions around this already? Um, oh yeah, <coughs> three, but I'll get to you first, yes. You specified 10 and I saw 10.7, does it align on cylinders or something like that? that uh, so that's the difference here. Yeah. Uh, I specified 10. Um, so in OpenStack, everything is base 2. Um, in the storage, um, it's, it's oh, base 10. Nice. Uh, sorry, it's the other way around. Yeah. But that's the difference. Oh, of yeah. course, it's SSH. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, you had a question at all? Uh, yeah. So in this configuration, it says uh, ice cut uh, is used, right? Yes. Yes. Well, it's, um, it's we use the iSCSI protocol. Um, and yeah, basically, um, there is some advantages there. Um, we take advantage of some functions in the iSCSI protocol, which you might know as iSCSI redirect. And that's basically, um, you do not have to configure multipathing. If a node dies, we just move your iSCSI session to another node. So that makes the ease of uh, configuration and it's um, much better suited to build a true storage scale-out platform. Right? We do have fiber channel support as well. Um, but the deeper integration with OpenStack is centered around iSCSI. Yeah. You had a question? <coughs> Before you um, showed the compatibility matrix, right, which products uh, uh, contribute... At the beginning, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <coughs> what, what part uh, of the SolidFire driver that is specific to SolidFire? I mean, we have the same capabilities with the, with the E-series or with the ONTAT uh, than with the SolidFire one. The second question is, uh, are there other solutions from that app which are not purely flash-based to do something similar? Or why only the SolidFire only do flash-based? So SolidFire is a, the question is, um, you have a wider portfolio, and correct me if I'm wrong, with, with products, um, um, E-Series, OnTop, and SolidFire, and others. Um, and the, um, functions we just showed you with OpenStack um, and SolidFire, is this also applicable to other pro uh, products in our portfolio? So um, all our products work with OpenStack, um, and some of them have um, integration like this. Others have uh, integration which require a little bit more work. Um, but they will all function with OpenStack. And if you look deeper into the platforms, then there is a fundamental change. Like our E-Series platform is a platform which is built for speed and built um, for density, but not providing a lot of data management capabilities. And um, that's usually being deployed to accelerate a single application stack, right? which could uh, benefit from the performance. But you take all of the data management capabilities from, for example, the database level. Um, data ONTAP is a platform which supports multiple disk types. Um, and supports multi-protocol. So should you want to use NFS as a protocol, we would definitely go with, um, with Data on Tap, which is our flagship product and will remain our flagship product for quite some time. Now I need to speed up. E-Series, um, uh, SolidFire is um, a platform providing iSCSI connectivity, a quality service, but the way we do scale out is very unique compared to the other. So it's a web scale architecture where the other is a enterprise architecture. Um, so those are the differences. Um, but we put a lot of effort to, um, to make it work with OpenStack and this is actually the easiest uh, we have. Yeah. All right, um, I, need, I need to finish um, and I quick, I will. Um, I just want to make sure, I will, we'll skip on the customer case, but it's, there's no other way to utilize or to manage the platform. Um, no library is needed. It's, it's very easy. Also, the iSCSI setup is, is very easy. Um, and I would encourage you to visit um, the brewery, uh, which you can find on netapp.io. Um, netapp.io, where we not only have a well-rich uh, filled GitHub for all of our platforms, but we also 
publish what we do with OpenStack, what we do with Kubernetes, um, with, uh, with, with, with Docker. We are having a certified Docker plugin for all of our platforms. And um, we have stuff when we get in or integrated in other platforms like native support and Ansible, for example, all the stuff will be, will be published on, uh, on this site. So have a look, um, very rich and a lot of stuff uh, you can find there. Thanks everyone. Yeah.